Please remain seated. The show will begin in three, two. Like a hell cut. <laughs> The Legend of Bloody Mary. Greetings, dear viewers. My name is Fandom Traveler 87. Welcome to my dark corner of the internet. This is Season 1, Episode 1 of my web series, Crave Factor. In today's video, we will be discussing the origins of Mary Worth. It is said it began over a hundred years ago that a woman was accused of being a witch, having dabbled with black magic and was discovered, then executed. It is often speculated that she was an unhappy woman who committed suicide after her baby was stolen or had been suspected of murdering her own children. Depending on which variation, this turned her into an angry, vengeful spirit, hell-bent on haunting anyone who dare mocked her name and the grievance that she had endured. All right, let's get into it. First story goes like this. Mary lived in a cabin or small cottage deep in the woods. The implication is that this occurred during the Salem witch trials. So Mary was well known around the village for selling tinctures and herbal remedies. Several of the local villagers began to grow scared and didn't want to get too close to her, assuming that they would be hexed or cursed, or that their animals would face the same sort of danger. Now those who chose to use the remedies given to them by Mary would be shunned by society for participating in, quote, Wicca. Then small children, such as young girls, started to go missing. The people in the village searched high and low for them everywhere possible, but to no avail. The girls were not found. It was then a few brave villagers decided to venture to the cabin where Bloody Mary lived, although Mary denied any acknowledgement of the missing children. Suspicion grew from the parents' minds at this point. Strangely enough, her normal, haggard, and elderly appearance looked more youthly. In spite of their concerns, there was nothing that could be done. Where it gets very interesting is that there was a miller's daughter who was captivated by a mysterious noise, one only which she could hear, a humming sound. This had happened while her mother was treating a terrible toothache, and ironically, she had used an herbal remedy she had gone from May. The mother was very frightened and cried for her husband to come and follow her. They both shouted to their daughter to try to stop her, but it seemed like the daughter was in a trance. Getting help from a few of the townsfolk, the town's farmer noticed a light emanating from the woods. Mary was seen standing in the clearing next to a big oak tree. She was holding a wand, having pointed it directly at the miller's house with the little girl heading straight towards it. Once she realized she was spotted, surrounded by pitchforks and guns, Mary broke the spell and fled for the forest. Did the witch die? Apparently she wasn't quick to escape the farmer. Having quickly equipped and loaded his gun, in the instance that Mary had decided to turn towards his daughter, he fired a shot at the woman and got her in the hip. Mary kicked and screamed, thrashing her body, struggling to break free from the captors. She was then tied to a wooden stake and a bonfire erupted. Hatred and pain in her eyes. Mary cursed the villagers by stating, Did any of them utter her name in a mirror? She could return and come back for them. Badly, upon going back to Mary's house and doing a proper search, unmarked graves were discovered and it appeared as though Mary used the blood of the missing children to make herself beautiful again. Thus, the legend of the murderous ghost is born. So how does the mere ritual work? The steps are fairly simple. You hold a lit candle in a darkened room, usually a bathroom. The door would be locked and sometimes it is said you have to turn on the sink and let the water run. Then you would chant the ghost's name in the mirror 
three times. What fate is in store for you? Well, there are a lot of retellings of what could happen if you're dumb enough to try this, but I'll narrow it down to a few. 1. Mary will appear behind you dripping blood. If you turn around to face her, she'll drag you away. 2. Your eyes will be ripped from their sockets and your face will be terribly scarred. 3. You will disappear from the bathroom and your very poor soul will forever remain trapped in the mirror along with her spirit. 4. You could be driven mad or dropped dead on the floor. Door number two, behind the back. Another variation to the tale of Bloody Mary. There was a local woman who suffered a severe impact from a car accident where her face was badly scarred before dying. Some say upon summoning her, her horrific face is what you see before your untimely demise. It is suggested that the legend was derived from a woman who bore the name Mary who died during the Salem Witch Trials, as discussed earlier. Story 3, Mary Tudor, Mary the First, Queen of England. Mary Tudor, also known as Bloody Mary, was born February 18, 1516, and died November 17, 1558. She ruled over England and Ireland from 1553 until her death. Queen Tudor was well known for her extremist beliefs and practices in reversing the English Reformation, which had begun during her father's reign. Her father was King Henry VIII, her mother was Catherine of Aragon. According to the Smithsonian Magazine, Tudor didn't quite simply inherit the throne, along with the vast luxuries that came with such a high title. With strong ambition, anyone who crossed her path and challenged her faced her wrath. During her five years as queen, her own religion as a devout Catholic was her number one priority. Tudor implemented reformations and tied restrictions at restoring the Catholic Church's ascendancy in England, which led to the death of 280 Protestants who were burned at the stake. This led to Mary Tudor being nicknamed Bloody Mary, which is another reason why she is so famous even now. And this could be what inspired the legend to begin with. Wouldn't want to see this bitch's face in my mirror. Definitely not. Boy 4, Mary Worth, the Witch of the Civil War. During the period where slavery was at its peak, this Mary Worth lived in Chicago and she would catch runaway slaves and keep them chained up in her barn. Mary would use them for her evil rituals. Some point eventually, the locals caught up to her axe and burned the woman at the stake. Her remains are supposedly buried in St. Patrick's Cemetery. In the 1960s, there lived a beautiful young woman named Mary Worthington, who was extremely vain and enjoyed staring at her own reflection. One day, there was a tragic car accident, and her face was horribly disfigured. No one could bear to look at Mary, and Mary could not look at herself in the mirror anymore. Mary happened to gaze into the mirror accidentally one day. She committed suicide. Elizabeth Bathory was a noble woman who lived from 1560 to 1614, known as the Bloody Countess and Countess Dracula. It was strongly believed she tortured and killed many young girls because she wanted to bathe in their blood to keep herself looking youthful. Bathory killed more than 600 women using hot pokers, an iron maiden, pins, blades, and freezing water. Later, her crimes were found out, and she was walled up alive in her castle in Slovakia. Story number seven, Mary Weatherby. In this version of the legend, it is said that Mary was a woman stabbed to death by her husband. And if you go into a dark room, even say her name three times, her grotesque face will appear in front of you, and she'll chase you around with a knife. In this retelling of the legend, there was a young girl named Mary Lou who lived in the United States back in the 1960s. It was senior year and she was crowned the prom queen. Someone had decided to pull a prank on Mary and they set off some firecrackers. Mary Lou's dress caught on fire and the girl was burned alive. Door number nine. 
Mary Johnson. Even though there is some connection with the Salem witch trials in this version of Mary's story, instead of Mary appearing to you instantly, everyone must hold hands in a group and sit in a circle. The room has to be completely dark, and you all must repeat the words together as follows. Come, Mary Johnson, come. A dim light will then appear over the head of one person. Boy 10, Hail Mary. Being the reverse delusion to Hail Mary, there's a legend where if you stand in front of a mirror in a dark room and chant Hail Mary seven times, the mirror will run blood and you will see Satan's face in the mirror. Story number 11, Silvanta Magal. The country of Sweden, it has its own Bloody Mary legend, where Savarta Madame, also known as Black Madame, will appear in front of you if you say her name 12 times. She has black skin, green hair, red teeth, and yellow eyes. In fact, number one, there is the Queen of Spades in Russia known as Dama Pika, who is also called Bloody Mary, as shown in the picture here. Fun fact number two. In Spain, they have their own Bloody Mary, known as Veronica. Fun fact number three. The Japanese have their own version known as Kuchisake Ona, or Slit Mouth Woman. But that is a story for another time. Bonus, did you know that Bloody Mary inspired the Candyman trilogy? Honestly, I love, love, love this movie so much. It is a fantastic movie in my opinion, especially one from the 90s. But honestly, if you haven't watched Candyman, I would I would recommend it strongly. You know, it's just, it's, it's a great film. And I've seen the first and second one, and I'm hoping to see number three at some point. Alright, let's move on. Supernatural. In Season 1, Episode 5, a spin-off of the urban legend, there was a young woman named Mary Worthington who lived in Indiana. When she was 19 years old, someone invaded her apartment and killed her on the spot. The murderer cut out her eyes. The woman died in front of a large mirror. She tried to spell out the killer's name, but only managed to get out the letters T-R-E. A surgeon named Trevor Sampson was suspected of the murder, but no one could prove it was him, and the case was closed. Mary's body was cremated, but her spirit remained trapped in the confines of the place where she tragically died. Ed Mary is a horror movie where a group of young adults spend the weekend in a cabin deep in the woods and they stupidly decide to play a game called Dead Mary, which, like most of the versions in this tale, they summon the witch by saying her name three times in front of a mirror. Honestly, my analysis as far as, like, with, um, like, the image here, it looks like it would potentially be a good movie. This is one of my favorite scary movies. So here's a basic summary. The year was 1969 and 18-year-old Mary Banner attended prom with her friends. She was hit and suffered a severe blow upon falling. When a bad prank went horribly wrong, her corpse got locked in a chest. Her body was never discovered and 35 years later, her spirit returns to avenge her death. Honestly, I've seen this movie like two or three times and I absolutely am in love with it. I totally recommend it. I might be doing a future analysis slash review on this film in the future. Alright guys, so we're reaching the final segment of this video where I will be Green reading Robin. a few Six alleged encounters at that seven feet people tall, have had and the price being with this supposed spirit. So let's just really jump right into it. I really do love the dialogue with this prop. This and person was in the 7th grade and that that attempted to summon really the ghost themselves. Way. Of, they tried um, saying her name with the three times upon of turning the off the light and so forth. Cone, it's actually really cool. The individual felt they were in a daze, even though they realized, after snapping out of their trance, the door remained locked and the room was still dark. In spite their fear, the person still managed to mutter out ever so slowly, Bloody Mary. Their own reflection appeared pale and lifeless. 
Then out of the corner of their eye, they saw someone or something draw back the shower curtain. They were able to say bloody before the person felt nauseous and was dripping sweat. Then came a sudden chill which ran down their spine. The individual felt like throwing up and had gotten a headache. For whatever reason, something made the person decide to open the curtain, and upon doing so, a horrific sight was revealed. What the person saw in the tub was, quote, an ugly naked figure with charred, cracked skin lounging there, with the candle's light shining bright, showing a glistening red upon its throat and under its eyes. The figure was a woman. The person says it reminds them of a legend known as Kashima Reiko. The terrifying creature had crawled out of the tub, creeping towards them. Then the individual describes throwing the candle down, fearing for their life at that moment. They didn't bother to try out the doorknob because their hands were sweaty. After hitting the door a few times, the door had flown open, and the individual looked back at the figure. The figure crawled back into the tub and placed her index finger upon her lip as if she said, Shh. As, she t as it turned out, in the end, the individual's twin sister was the one who had opened the door and stated she had heard a loud thump, which had to have had been when the person flung their candle. In hesitation, the person told their twin what, what they were doing there. The individual swears to themselves since that awful event, they would never go into that bathroom alone again. Contrary to anyone's skepticism, this person knows what they saw and heard by being by themselves in that room. And their message to those who are listening, do not make the same mistake. If you value your life, do not attempt to summon what could potentially harm you, even if you don't believe. Those who are non-believers often may try at this game, some of which may poke fun at the severity of another individual's own account of something truly traumatizing. It is with a heavy heart that I warn you, dear viewers, do not be a fool. Do not laugh at something that you know nothing about, for there is another world out there behind the black veil, lurking in the shadows, roaming this earth in some form. Even, if the, even though we may not see it, that doesn't mean it's not out there. Story number two. Another user on the Scary for Kids website had this version of the legend to share. Mary's father told her that if she went into the forest to help him, she'd get a slice of cake with red, with red frosting. Mary eagerly did as she was told, having chopped some wood for him. When they completed their task, the girl asked, Can I have cake now? Her father replied, of course you can. Then swiftly the man brought down his axe and struck his child, cutting off her own head. The girl became the cake. Her own blood was the frosting. Story number three. And I'm pretty sure, I don't know, I think we're coming up to the last one here. Uh, actually, we have a couple more. All right, well, here we go. Another retelling of the supposed legend by another user from the Scary for Kids website described as told, and I quote, There was a girl named Mary who that, that was in the school bathroom. As she exited, the school initiated a lockdown. The girl rushed back to her class and banged on the door. However, it was too late for her. The killer pulled the trigger of his gun and shot Mary, killing her instantly. Later, others had discovered her body. Both her eyes were gouged out. Burying her didn't put her at rest. Her spirit became bound to the bathroom mirror, and those who try to summon her ghost will pay the price. The last story told by another user for the Scary for Kids website tells that there was a beautiful young girl named Mary who lived way out in the countryside. It was one summer evening that she bought a new sundress, and was excited to try it on. The girl hurried to her room and got it on. The dress was absolutely stunning. So silky and smooth that for hours she'd stand in front of her mirror, admiring how good she looked in it. Mary was so distracted that she paid no attention to her surroundings 
as her very old and run-down fireplace was still going to the point that the flames emerged and traveled, setting the house ablaze. It wasn't until a hitchhiker just happened to be passing by the girl's home and saw the fire. The man ran to the city to gather help. By then, Mary was dead. It is told that if you try to summon her ghost, she will appear to you wearing that same dress soaked in blood, along with her long hair drenched in it. If you see her holding a flower, that means it will be placed on your grave. If you see her holding a knife, she will cut you up. In conclusion, do you really believe that a ghost could be haunting a bathroom mirror? Perhaps. Take time to reflect on what you learned in today's episode. Sometimes, just because you may not believe in the legend, or any of the variations told by numerous others, be cautious. Things don't always stay buried. Don't always stay hidden from the naked eye. Those who are strong enough to channel an energy not clearly visible to the average human's own perception will either get the results they look for, or rather, may get more than what they bargained for. So the next time when you're alone in the bathroom, are you truly alone? Or is there something on the other side of the glass, watching, waiting for you, to, t to take you into the depths, of, in into the darkness with it? I'm Phantom Traveler 87. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey into Season 1, Episode 1 of my web series, Creep Factor. Stay tuned for the next episode. Subscribe to my channel for further uploads and updates. More juicy content is coming your way. Alright. I really do hope that you guys enjoyed this. And I look forward to seeing what comments you have and what your thoughts are. Alright, until then... Bye!